Now before we begin our test, I just want you to know that when we get these test vehicles, especially trucks, we take the utmost in care to make sure they're not damaged, scratched, or in a wreck. Well, most of the time anyway. Now usually if I get a luxury car that's got a $62,000 price tag, no one bats an eye. But if you tell someone you're driving a truck with a $62,000 price tag, they balk. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Nope. This is what this GMC 2500 HD cost. But let's see what we're getting for the money here. By the way, if you're wondering what all this goop is on the paint, it's wax. You put a coat on, you leave it, and make sure the paint doesn't get scratched. Makes the owner happy when they get it back. Now you can get a gasoline engine in this series, but we had the Duramax diesel. A monster engine putting out 397 horsepower and a whopping 765 foot-pounds of torque. That and the automatic transmission adds around 8500 bucks to the price right there. We'll get to the performance and fuel mileage of this a little bit later. Then you got the four door, which adds around three grand, I'm told. And four wheel drive for better traction on the rear. We'll be talking about that later, too. That adds around three grand. And if you want to haul stuff, I decided to. Why not? It's a truck. Got to have the bed liner. Also, keep in mind there are a lot of interior goodies like leather, seating, XM radio, and all the power goodies. That jacks the price up too. Now keep in mind if you get a 2500 HD with a gasoline engine and two wheel drive, eliminate a lot of the options, you can get one for around 45 grand. But hey, it's more fun loaded up like this, I think. Now I'm not gonna cover the interior and other fine points because we'll be covering that if you stick around for the second half of the video. We test the 1500 Silverado with the big gasoline V8 engine. Here, Spot. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Come here. Now you don't have much to say, do you? Now that we're off-road, I have a few tips for you. If you're going to buy one of these and you're staying on the pavement, two-wheel drive is fine. If you're going off-road for any reason, you have to have four-wheel drive on this vehicle. It's mandatory. Because you have this big, heavy engine and all this weight in front, no weight in the rear, and if you try to go off-roading in two-wheel drive, you're going to get stuck. Let me give you an example. I'm a two-wheel drive, I'm in some soft sand, I'm going to hit the gas and see if I can get out. The whole axle is jumping up and down. I just barely got out. Fortunately, I do have four-wheel drive, so if I got stuck, it wouldn't be a problem. So once again, if you're going off-road for any reason, you need four-wheel drive on this vehicle. It's not really debatable, unless you like walking. Now we'll do the same thing in four-wheel drive. See, no drama. Very smooth. Back on the way. Now the main reason we're doing this test is to get the actual fuel consumption mileage on this diesel engine. The EPA doesn't rate it, so you're kind of playing a guessing game unless you're looking at a video like this. Now the computer says in the last 400 miles it averaged 13.7 miles per gallon. But since I've only put 100 miles on it myself, we don't know where the first 300 were. So we're going to get on the freeway, take a 250 mile trip, and see what it does then. Now before we get on the freeway, I need to make a couple stops. Stop number one, our spy headquarters. i got a report in here. Good place to catch a rattlesnake or two. Boo! Uh-oh. Somebody's been shooting off ammunition in here. 
This is my next party spot. You're all invited. Hello? Goodbye. Since I went to the trouble to get this truck dirty, might as well take the trouble to show you one of the few remaining ghost towns in Arizona. This used to be a full, thriving city with a post office and everything. Not much left but the mine. This is 150 years old, but not much left. Then we can follow these steps to the main house. Ah, uh, not much left here. If you like to collect bottles and artifacts, it'll keep you busy down here all day. And this is a secret tunnel that runs underneath the house. I've been in here before, but not today. Snakes are out. And finally, the old ore house. Not whorehouse, ore house. The ore house was over there, but they tore it down 30 years ago. And there's still bags of gold ore in here, but there's also a lot of snakes waiting for you. So I'm just going to leave it alone. If you live in Arizona, you ought to come out here. It's a nice party spot. By the way, if you do come out here, make sure you come out here around midnight. Then you can visit the cemetery, especially when there's a full moon. Now here's a dumb butt who's been running around with his left turn signal on for seven miles. Oh, that's Officer Plummer from the Department of Corrections. Just keep that signal going, Plummer. <laughs> got eight miles later. Oh, got the right one on. Better get off that phone. Quit texting. Okay, we just finished a very long highway trip. Plus, we took another local freeway expressway trip at lower speeds. And as you can see, the truck is a little cleaner since you first saw it putting a coat of wax on the finish before you go off-road works fine as you can see there's not a mark on it it's a good way to take care of your vehicle it stays nice and shiny that way now we'll talk about the fuel consumption figures now on our highway trip 250 miles with the cruise set around 75 plus we got 18 miles per gallon on a second expressway trip we took before now, running around 60 to 65 miles per hour, we reached 20 miles per gallon. On the other hand, in heavy city traffic stop and go, we saw 14 miles per gallon. In a mixed city expressway cruising, averaged around 16 miles per gallon. Now some of you might be saying, well hey, I got a V8 gasoline engine and I can do about that, so what's the big deal? But remember, we're driving on an empty bed here. If you're going to put the 7,000 pounds payload in the bed, or you're going to tow 18,000 pounds on a trailer hitch, that's where the difference is. Usually on a vehicle like this, towing maximum capacity, you'll drop to around 11 to 12 miles per gallon. But on a gasoline V8, usually around 8 to 9 miles per gallon. So if you're getting a vehicle like this for towing heavy loads, and that is the purpose, day after day, you are eventually going to see a big fuel savings in the economy. And on top of that, this is a lot more easier to tow with all that massive torque. Why strain yourself with a gasoline V8? So if you're in the habit of using this tow hitch for hauling all that gear, I think the Duramax is a pretty good option and certainly worth the money. Besides, there's something very, very enjoyable about having an engine with that much power. This thing really pulls like a tank and great fun to drive every day. I think that's worth the price alone. Now if you want to see how this diesel engine compared to the gasoline 6.2 V8 and 5.3 liter V8 engines, hit the button above and we'll take you to those videos. And give you a lift. Guess not. I agree.